Well, the breakdown again update. Yes, actually moving again, and uh, we're now able to start working with more brokers. That and more on this episode of The Clutch Trucker Channel. Clutch Trucker filmed before a live and fuzzy studio audience. Yep, that's Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker Channel. Okay, well, uh, breakdown update. Uh, obviously you can see I'm moving. Um, yeah, I, uh, I saw a lot of the suggestions and the comments pop up. I haven't had a chance to read them all. Saying, you know, maybe it's the, the breather on the fuel tank. And I had thought of that last night. Um, you know, because I've had that issue once before. When I replaced those breather tubes years ago, uh, the, the, th the actual the thing, breather thing valve and the tube, I made the tube too long. And it was like 118 degrees or something in Arkansas one day and the plastic tube melted against the fuel tank on the passenger side and pinched it off and I had that issue where then it, all, all of a sudden my fuel gauge was dropping way low where it should have been because it was just sucking fuel only out of the driver's side tank uh, difference is I had a fuel gauge that worked which I don't right now so I was able to then uh, just trim off that hose a little bit and then that problem went away So there was no way to prove that with a non-working fuel gauge today, but what I did is I today uh, pulled off the breather tube and Made sure it wasn't clogged and it was not uh, Tried just leaving the uh, fuel cap off of the passenger side tank Because uh, once we uh, my son came back up with some more fuel in a fuel can, we were able to prime the uh, filter again, get the engine started. We had to do that two or three times, but we got it started so I, could move, I then was able to disconnect from the trailer, get over to the uh, fuel island there at the Howard's General Store in Glendo, and uh, fill up the driver's side tank. And that, it was damn near empty. That's what was causing all the trouble, because it was just pulling from the one tank not the passenger side tank and uh, so that's why I thought I had much more range than I had well I was running out of fuel that's why I was sputtering so uh, put on I of course couldn't use my fuel card there so I had to pay the full price and it was 4.79 a gallon there a little irritating but uh, I put on 87 gallons and uh, we started it back up I let it rev for like 15 minutes and doing just fine, acting like it should. So, uh, obviously the problem is I've got a bad line between the fuel tanks or from the passenger fuel tank into the junction, what have you, something like that. Because it's not pulling any fuel from the fuel tank on the passenger side. That one's still full. I've got like 130 gallons in there. Um, so that's what the whole issue was. I now have a new fuel pump that will I paid a thousand dollars to get put on yesterday plus the cost of the fuel pump probably was getting close to about you, you got to replace those on a truck every you know three to four hundred thousand ish miles anyway it had been close to that so couldn't hurt that I have a new fuel pump but you know paying a thousand dollar road call I tell you and losing my load but you know I filled it up and uh, I started looking for other loads again I could have just driven straight home. Problem is, I, Sap Brothers won't be able to do the fuel gauge thing, and if I have to go back into the shop again, I want to be able to do everything at once. The fuel gauge and the fuel line issue, whatever that may be. So, that means I have to go to a Freightliner dealer. And I have said it over and over before, I don't trust Floyd's Freightliner in Cheyenne. So, since I can drive, I just have to know but I've only got one tank of fuel and I have to fill up about every 300 miles and know that's what I got to do. So I went ahead and started looking for loads and I found one uh, coming out of Wright, Wyoming of all places, about 100 miles north of where I was in Glendo. So that's where we're heading right now. We're driving up Highway 59 north of from Douglas. If you stay on 59 all the way up north, you hit uh, Gillette and I-90. Right is about 30 miles shorter of that. Uh, so we're going to go up there, park for the night. I'm going to pick up a, apparently a couple of skid steers and 
and some spreaders going uh, over to Pocatello, Idaho for a delivery on Thursday. So today being Tuesday, yes, the 16th, we uh, pick up tomorrow and deliver on Thursday. So then I'm going to try to find another load from there, heading somewhere east. <clears throat> so maybe I can find a Freightliner dealer uh, that I trust. Like I trust the Truck Center Company's ones in York, Lincoln, Omaha, they've got uh, Norfolk, Nebraska, they've got a few out that way. Uh, some of the ones in Iowa I trust. So I'd rather try to earn some money while I can right now since I lost that load and I've been bleeding profusely money-wise. Uh, so, at least I can still drive right now, I just gotta keep in mind, I only have a three to 500 mile range with just the one fuel tank. So, that's the way we're gonna have to play it until I can get it fixed. But at least, as you can see, we're rolling again. And at least I gotta load, this one's actually paying, uh, even if you include the deadhead up to go get it, to uh, 10 a mile. It's a new broker we've never worked with before, but because we're at 90 days now, and we've had some inspections, we were able to work with them. So our broker pool <clears throat> is opening up much bigger, which is a big help. So uh, that's all I can do, trying to be positive, at least, you know, just one day. I know what the issue is now, basically. It's somewhere in the fuel lines between the passenger tank and the junction and or, and or the uh, crossover line, which then, uh, levels out the, the tanks between each other so that it, it doesn't just draw solely from one, which is what's been happening. So there you go in a nutshell. All right, so here we are parked in uh, Wright, Wyoming, W-R-I-G-H-T, not R-I-G-H-T. Um, they, they, I remember when we lived in Douglas, Wyoming years ago, there was a tornado that just devastated this little tiny town. Not much here, a couple of gas stations, uh, that's about it, little truck stops. Um, but, you know, good place to park, and uh, apparently I'm just a few miles away from my pickup. It doesn't have an address. That's weird. It just has coordinates. That's how you know you're in the middle of nowhere where the place you're picking up from doesn't even have an address. It just has coordinates. Thank God I can put coordinates into my Garmin so I can find out how to get there tomorrow. Pick up between noon and 3. Apparently I'm picking up a couple of skid steers. I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, and, uh, and spreaders of some sort uh, going to a landfill. Should be interesting. This one's paying well. I mentioned that earlier. Like I say, uh, with all miles included, 210 a mile. If you don't include the deadhead, 255 a mile. Uh, and because we, we were able to work with this new broker, Geodis Logistics, uh, because we've now hit the 90 days and we now have the inspections. So you know, they wouldn't have been available to us before, but you know, at least now, like I say, we're to the point where a bigger pool of brokers is now uh, available to us to work with so we don't have to just keep taking really super cheap loads like we've been doing we should have a few more options uh, the rates are still terrible they're still in the toilet they've never recovered this year normally you know january february are bad every year and they start to go back up but they haven't this year they just stayed rock bottom it's freaking ridiculous and of course i just keep having all these repairs and breakdowns i still have to get all the, the stuff the fuel lines like i talked about everything else repaired um, but, you know, by being able to at least get moving, know what the problem is, uh, and know I can just act like I have only one fuel tank, because it's really all I have to pull from right now, uh, at least I can keep moving, so I can keep earning money and then go to a place where I want to, to get it done, and then hopefully can do it in a timely fashion, what do you think? Oh, and apparently because I just have to uh, continue to get kicked in the teeth with an iron boot after I finally got the load and everything and, and was leaving uh, Glendo where I of course was parked last night hopefully tonight I'll get some good sleep because I, I was literally five feet away from the railroad tracks for the coal trains going by all night long nothing like trying to sleep and you have a train going through your head anyway um, so as soon as I get on the on-ramp to I-25 I hear all this air rushing and then I hear a thump sound yeah the uh, the bracket for my uh, air to air boot that goes from the turbo through the charge air cooler and back into the intake manifold. See, this is it. it. It busted on me. Completely came apart. So then, of course, the boot falls off and you don't have any turbo. So, what should have taken me like 20, 25 minutes to get up to Douglas uh, took like 45 minutes because I could 
I have no boost. So uh, there's a bomb gars in Douglas, and I stopped and I bought some a couple of different size hose clamps, and uh, it turned out to be this smaller one that was the one that I needed. So I bought two of each. So I made sure I had another backup because these aren't the kind of hose. These aren't as good a, a, as this type. But you know, you, you do go with what you got. When I get through someplace else that's going to have maybe better ones, I'll get a, a better one. At least I have another backup. At least that's a quick fix. It actually takes a minute to shove that boot back on there and put the hose clamp on it. So at least that wasn't a major thing. Well, thanks for tuning in for that one. Just a little update, let you know what's going on. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I can find someplace I trust a little more to get uh, all the repairs done and, uh, and all that. At least we're able to keep moving right now and try to actually start earning some money to pay back all these repairs and everything we've been doing. <sighs> gotta do what you gotta do there, right? Right, Rusty? Yes, I love you too. Yeah, he's, he's, he's buttering me up because he knows the Beckon strips are coming. Please subscribe. Please like and comment. I get your comments as soon as I can. Sometimes it takes a few days because I'm a working truck driver. Clutch Trucker on Instagram. Clutch Trucker on Twitter. And as always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch and Rusty, out. Oh my god! Bill Murray, I I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to shoot you. Uh, that that's all right. It was my fault. I shouldn't have tried to scare you. I'm so sorry. I, I thought you were a zombie. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to make it through this. Do, do you have any regrets? Well, uh, uh, yeah, maybe Garfield. Okay, you know the rules. Come down here. Here we are. No, no, I still have it in my hand. Hey, Goofy, come down here. And there it goes. All right. Got to make you work for it a bit, don't we? Come on. You know, you don't have too many jobs in this truck. So we got to make you work for the treats just a little bit. Oh, yum. Yum, yum. They's a happy dog. All over them tonight, maybe. All right, here's your other one. Oh, yes. Thank you. Munch, munch, munch. All right, Rusty. See, he always gets this for doing his work, for helping in the opening and the close. And all that. Keep the dog happy. It was a happy dog, happy life. No, no, no. It's happy, happy wife, happy life, right? There you go. Get those little pieces. Alrighty. Oh, there's one more little piece. There you go. Happy dog look.